For project 170, we'll replace the C4 capacitator with the C2 one which has far less storage space than the C4 capacitator. When we turn on the slide switch, the fan and LED come on, but when we hold our hand over the phototransistor, there's, you know, if any, very minute difference in the fan speed and the LED's brightness because once again the C2 capacitator only holds one thousandth, thousandth of the energy that the C4 capacitator can store so the difference is essentially unnoticeable. Project 171 delayed speed control 2 requires us to swap the locations of the R3 resistor and phototransistor. Make sure the positive end of the phototransistor is pointing to the C4 capacitor. And now, when we turn on the slide switch, we will need to shine light on the phototransistor to stop the fan and turn off the LED for a short while. And then both will come back on again. Once again, the C4 capacitator is now withholding energy and then discharging it. Once MD2 is audio delayed speed control. We replace the phototransistor with the microphone and we will blow talk loudly or clap into the microphone and let's see what happens. Hello? How are you doing? The speed of the fan changes as does the brightness of the LED. Even though it's already doing uh, so, it changes even more when you blow clap or talk loudly into the mic. Because it's changing the resistance in the circuit. For project 173 motor photo speed control we're going to use this circuit and after we turn on the slide switch we're going to move the adjustable resistor until the fan just turns off. Then we will cover the phototransistor and the motor will spin. When I remove my hand, the fan will stop. Cover it, spins, remove my hand and it stops because the resistance increases as more light reaches the phototransistor. 174 is light bus. We will turn on the slide switch and the speaker makes weird buzzing noises while the color LED flickers. I will cover the phototransistor with my hand and the sounds get louder. The color LED is also brighter, but does not change colors. If I wave my hand over the phototransistor, the sounds are even more unusual. It may sound like radio or TV static. Now we will replace the color LED with the white LED, see what whether there are different results. Because the color LED does not have a microcircuit, I mean the white LED does not have a microcircuit, the sound is different. It's more steady. Red LED. Now the circuit kind of sounds like a B.
175 is delay lights. This project is similar to projects 164 and 165, except we are using two lamps instead of one. When I hold down the press switch, the white LED partially lights up, but when I hold down the press switch, after a few seconds, both LEDs reach full brightness and flash. When I let go of the press switch, the LEDs will gradually dim and eventually go out. I'm not going to wait the whole time, I don't think, for them to turn off, but I am able to explain this basic principle. You can just renew the amount of energy by holding down the press switch for a couple seconds again. Now for the next part of this project, I will replace the R3 resistor with the R5 one and see what happens now. I have to hold down the press switch for a considerably longer period of time just for the LEDs to come on. But I think also that means that they're going to take considerably longer to turn off too. Which I'm certainly not going to wait for. Finally, we are going to replace the C4 capacitator with the C2 one. Now the LEDs come on and go off much faster. I'm not going to wait the whole time, but uh, that's close enough. 176 is pretty interesting. This project is touch light. It's pretty simple, but has an interesting principle. We are going to complete this circuit and light the white LED using my fingers. I will touch my fingers between points A and B right here. And now naturally, my fingers would be good conductors of electricity because like all of our bodies, my body is at least 70% water and water conducts electricity. The white LED turns on now. It's not at full brightness, but I could wet my fingers and make the connection even better, but I'm not going to do that. You get the basic idea. Some types of lamps do have special sensors that respond to human flesh contact because flesh conducts electricity, but you may just have to use one finger instead of two because the area, the gap in between the circuit is much smaller. So one finger will be able to complete the circuit. And sometimes you don't have, and oftentimes you don't have to just hold your fingers there. You just push and then the lamp is on and then you push the sensor again to turn it off. 177, now a range tone uses this circuit and we will turn on the slide switch and move the adjustable resistor back and forth. We hear a tone. But you'll notice that you only hear sounds for the most part over just a narrow range on RV. Here's some clicking noises, but the continuous buzzing sounds are only available over a narrow range on the adjustable resistor. Now let's see what happens when we replace the R5 resistor with the R3 one. The sound is more high pitched. And it seems like the range on the RV in which sounds are available is even narrower.
already the sound is off. 178 slow off lights requires us to turn on the slide switch, nothing will happen. We have the color and red LEDs set up and we will push and hold down the press switch. The LEDs come on and flash and now they're going to slowly turn off. This time we'll be able to watch them turn all the way off. Hit the press switch again and they'll stay on but they're gradually dimming once again. Now we can change how long the LEDs stay on by replacing either the capacitator or the R5 resistor. The LEDs turn off as soon as you let go of the press switch when you use the C2 capacitor. Now I'm going to replace the R5 resistor with the R3 one. Look how quickly the LEDs go out even when you have the C4 capacitator in place. And as an option, we can replace either LED with the white one. I'm just going to replace the color LED. Still goes out quickly. Just going to put the R5 resistor back. And now we'll be able to watch the LEDs go out more easily since neither of them flash. And there you have it. Project 179 3D Pictures is very interesting. Now I cannot really demonstrate this project, although I might be able to try, but we are supposed to look at these pictures. One of them shows a desert and some mountains. Another shows what looks like an asteroid. Not sure what this one shows. But here it looks like this is a boat on a lake. Anyway, they may look blurry, but we are supposed to view them using the red and blue color filters. We would put the red filter in front of our left eye and the blue filter in front of our right eye and look at the pictures again. You have to actually view them yourself with one filter in front of each eye, red in front of left, blue in front of right, and you will notice that the pictures are three-dimensional when you view them this way. Oh, in addition to height and width, the pictures will have depth as well. These pictures contain separate red and blue images taken from slightly different viewpoints combined together. And so when you use the filters, your brain interprets them as a single image. Most people have two eyes spaced about two inches apart, so each eye will see the world slightly differently. And your brain uses the difference in views to calculate difference. The greater the difference between the two scenes, the closer it must be. It'll be harder to judge distance with just one eye. Now, if you watch a 3D movie in a theater, you have to wear 3D glasses so that each eye sees a different image because the movie screen is actually showing two images, but the glasses will filter them so that they appear to be combined into one. And most movie theaters use polarized images and glasses with polarized lenses. Another way to make 3D is to use red and blue images and then view them using glasses with red and blue filters. So that is like what you are doing in this project, even though it's a lower quality than actual glasses. So there you have it for 3D pictures.